Hello and welcome to section 26 of the Grand Tour of Northumberland. Today we're going to be looking at some peel towers, um, some sites where there used to be medieval villages and lots and lots of hill forts. So join me for section 26. So I'm beginning this walk at Hartside near Linnip and that's where we're going to be finishing the walk actually. This is where the section ends but because I'm by myself I'm going to have to walk to the beginning which is a four mile hike to get to the start of this section. If you go this side of the wall it'll take you to that place where that lady died in the snowstorm but if you follow this way takes you to a nice track that will take you to the place. I wanted to see the place where the lady died in the snow but this uh, nice track will get me to where I need to be very quick and we are in the winter now so I don't have a lot of daylight hours so I need to make I need to get to the start of this walk as quickly as I can. So here I joined the salt road, salt road goes that way to where we were on the last section and we're following it this direction back into Annam. So I'm back at Annan where I finished the last section and this is the start of section 26. This here is St Michael's Church at Annan. Immediately upon entering the churchyard you can find three bases of medieval crosses that were once way markers on the Salters Road. By the 19th century the church was in a dilapidated state and restoration began in 1870 with further work done in the mid 20th century. It's believed that there has been a church on this site since Anglo-Saxon times but the current church is likely 12th or 11th century in origin. The earliest record being from 1135 when William de Vesti gifted the church to the monks of Annick Abbey who may have rebuilt it. 
It's been suggested for a ditch that runs around the church. This is the ditch here. Means that it was originally a Roman fortlet, but this is unlikely and the ditch is more likely to be medieval in origin. A letter exists stating from 1597 from Henry Percy, the ninth Earl of Northumberland, to his cousin Thomas Percy, who was one of the leaders of the gunpowder plot. In the letter, it mentions the church. Next door to the church is Tower House. This was once a peel tower built in the 14th century during the reign of Edward III and is first mentioned in 1405. In 1541, it was described as the Little Tower but it eventually became the vicarage and was known as Vicar's Peel. By 1821 it was in ruinous state and restored in 1844. It was later a youth hostel before becoming a private residence that it is today. In this field once existed the rest of Arnhem. It was quite a large medieval village in the past, almost a small town. Sadly, you can't see much today. In 1352 there was once 34 houses here. By the 17th to 18th century the village had been cleared by the landowner. Right on the top there once stood Arnhem Castle. Here you can see the square remains of a building. This is the site of Arnhem Castle. It was once a 13th century peel tower. It used to belong to the Earl of Northumberland. It is first mentioned in 1405 and again in 1415 1514, 1541, by which time it had started to fall into disrepair after repeated Scottish raids. I may be wrong, but I believe that the vaulted ceiling of the cellar for Arnhem Castle is still intact and it's just covered over. 34 houses in the medieval times, two peel towers and a church. Arnhem probably would have grown into a small town if it were not for all the violence on the borders. Likely it was a stopping place for drovers and people travelling into Scotland and England and also such a large parish for the church there probably would have been a market there once upon a time as well. And when you get to this junction we're going straight on. We're heading to Brendick. You see in this field, you probably not get it on the camera, but it's like lots of little bumps like that. That's the remains of medieval ploughing. In this field here existed another medieval village known as Never Prendick, and it was last mentioned in 1554 and likely destroyed by the Scots. This is the main farmhouse at Prendick and farm buildings. It's a fine example of a late Georgian early Victorian farm and the farmstead once housed a water mill that likely helped power a blacksmith was built around the 1830s during the reign of William IV. That was just a short seven year reign. This is where we leave the road and follow the public byway to Ingram. This is the site of Cochrane Hill Fort. It's a little difficult to see anything on the ground, but from the air you'll be able to see it much clearer. I'll put a satellite image of it. There's a rampart there and it goes around in a circle. 
So here we join the Ingram Hill Fort Trail. I'm really hoping my camera's working because I can't see anything on the screen, unfortunately. Don't know what's happened there. Not exactly sure what's wrong with my camera. There seems to be a fault with the microphone. I plug the microphone in, the screen goes off. But when the microphone's not in, the screen comes back on. So hopefully I'll get some decent footage today. <laughs> but I'm not 100 percent sure. You can just see pointing out of the cloud there, Forden Hill. There's an old fumbling tale about the hill. A farmer was walking by and the hill opened up and inside he could see all the fair folk having a big feast. One of the fair folk offered him a drink from a goblet. He was just about to accept when he remembered that if he were to take a drink then he would end up being trapped under the hill with the fair folk forever. He threw the goblet on the ground and ran away never to come back. If you see a satellite image of it, or if you actually go to the other side, I went with my daughter to the top of there a while back. Um, it, it looks like the hill itself looks like the belly of a pregnant woman. And there's two hill forts on the other side that look like a woman's breasts. There, it's completely cleared now. So that's old Forden Hill. That's uh, where the palace of the Queen of the Fairies is supposed to be underneath there. This here is Wever Hill and is probably the oldest hill fort that we visit today. There's been a settlement here since around 400 BC until around 400 AD. It was defended by two ramparts, the outer stone and the inner made of earth. Inside, archaeologists discovered the remains of 17 timber roundhouses and three stone roundhouses, although they may not have all dated from the same period. Be careful here, the trail doesn't go straight up. It goes along the side. This is Middle Dean Hill Fort. There's an entrance and a rampart all the way around. There was a double wall, the inner earth and the outer stone. Inside, archaeologists found the remains of five roundhouses. This is looking towards Ingram, where there is a very nice cafe. That's looking towards Weather Hill. When we get to this post, I'm going to follow this public bridle way here for a slight detour. It goes along the side of this wood. And then when we come back up, we'll just follow it straight up back onto the path again. There's something just the other side of this wood, which is well worth seeing. I'm going to go through this gate and then along that way. So we'll get to this gate. I'm going to take a slight detour down there. And just where we want to see is just there. So what I've come to show you is just beyond this gate. However, it's trespassing to see it. But let's see. But the last time I was here, I got permission off the shepherd to see it. That's not too bad. Again, I don't think you're going to see much on the ground, but this is what we took a detour for. For me, I can clearly see the outlines of walls and buildings. This was an Iron Age settlement outside of a hill fort called Haystack Hill. You can see the roundhouses and each roundhouse 
had its own little courtyard. Despite mirroring Romano Britain sites, this settlement only just predates Roman Britain and dates from around the time of Christ. Here is a clear outline of one of the roundhouses. Well, the views have opened up. That's Cockane Hill over there. And Weather Hill, and behind it is Old Forden Hill. Down into Ingram. That's just the other side of there is where we're going. Beautiful. Fantastic scenery and brilliant history. What more could you want? The last hill fort is just on top of there. There's the hill fort. It's very busy at the moment. I'm not quite sure if you can see on the camera, but there's like two stone ramparts. And we've got a closer look. So I'm stood in front of the outer wall at the moment. As you can see, it's as bigger than me. Gives you a bit of scale. And then, if I don't slip down, <laughs> there's the second wall. You can see there's the outer, and then there's the inner wall. Bruff Hill Hill Fort is the last one we see today and the most spectacular, although not necessarily the oldest. It was likely built between 300 and 200 BC. Inside they found an Anglo-Saxon knife, suggesting it may have still been in use after 410 AD when the Roman occupation of Britain ended. Inside there are three visible roundhouses. As you leave Bruff Law, you pass the remains of another Iron Age settlement that are less visible. So as you're leaving Bruff Law, you come across the remains of this rectangular structure, which is the remains of a medieval house. Quite modern in comparison to Bruff Law. So this river in the bottom is the River Bremish, which we crossed in the last section and it was still just a little stream there she has the river Bremish and back there is Bruff Law the hill fort's right at the top On top of Hartside Hill are even more Iron Age settlements. So if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to leave a comment below. Hit the subscribe button for the next adventure. Share with your friends on social media and I'll catch you on the next one.
remind 